Let me agree with the right honourable gentleman about how important it is to stand together in favour of free speech, freedom of expression, the rule of law, democracy, the values that we hold dear. And I think that demonstration in Paris and the outpouring you've seen both here and around the world against these horrific attacks shows that these values will not be uh, defeated. Well, the fallout from Charlie Hebdo and the cartoonist killings has boiled down to, in many minds, the continuing battle for free speech and freedom of the press. But a French comic who posted something on his Facebook page seemingly showing sympathy for the French assassins has the French, and for that matter, everybody wondering where that line is drawn between freedoms and incitement. Let's welcome back to Midpoint from Mediaite, where he covers all things media and pop culture. Joe Concha is back, not in the hot seat, but in the warm seat today, if you will. Good to see you again, Joe. It's like 20 degrees where I am right now. And trust me, nothing is warm here in New Jersey. Today. Don't worry about it. It's about 75 degrees here. Just thought I'd drop that in. I know. It's, it's terrible. I get that. I'm sorry. That's the kind of free speech I don't agree with. Uh, <laughs> <rubbing that>. <laughs> <laughs> I figured. Okay. First. I'll give you that Thanks. one. This is interesting, though, if you look at it, because there's a comic in France, uh, Diodon, I believe is his name. He has popularized an arm gesture that represents a Nazi salute. He has been convicted of racism and anti-Semitism. He puts on his Facebook page that he feels like uh, Charlie Koulibaly, using the first name of Ed Bo, last name of the guy who basically was uh, in charge of killing the hostages at the mm -hmm. deli. But they're basically cracking down on this. They're putting him in jail. They're detaining him. There's people wondering, wait a minute, isn't that part of free speech? It's, it's an interesting argument that everybody's going to get involved in, not only in France, I fear, but here in America as well. Where do you draw that line? So we champion Charlie Hebdo, which I've done, obviously, for going out a week later after 12 of their fellow workers, friends, are executed in their offices, and they put out a cover today with Muhammad on it uh, saying, uh, I am Charlie, and all is forgiven. Uh, I, 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 I would say that was one of the most courageous things I've ever seen in, in journalism uh, from those folks. Uh, so that's championed, right? And to your question, but we're going to talk about free speech unless it's free speech that we don't necessarily agree with. And look, who agrees with anybody making a Nazi salute or, or doing anything that seems sympathetic towards the, the monsters that carried this out? But unfortunately, it's a double-edged sword. If you're going to allow one mocking Muhammad uh, or mocking Christianity, then I, you have to allow this. The problem is that many times the government, whether it be here, whether it be France, is using surveillance, using social media to try to track chatter around possible terror attacks. So... Yes, everybody's for free speech, but our freedoms will be limited in the process as we try to sift out who's just making a joke and who actually may be serious and carrying out another attack like that. Ed. Well, when it comes down to free speech, and also you and I are uh, on very much the same level when it comes to freedom of the press and the fact that when you go out there, though, you've got to be honest, but you've got to be factual. You've got to, if you're going to say something, you've got to make sure that it's not idiotic. What was said by Steve Emerson on Fox, where he claimed Birmingham, England, was a Muslim-only city, I mean, that has to say something to people because they let this go. They, they let this kind of stuff go. He apologized later, but this is what makes us all seem like idiots. That's the thing. And this is something I take very seriously, what I'm doing with you right now, Ed. I'm a guest on your show, and I could just think that I know everything I need to talk about, but I make sure that, look, I, I know some of the topics that we may be covering, and I double and triple check everything before I go on the air because that's a good service to you. It's respect to you and to your audience that I'm not just blowing BS up your butt. And in the case of Mr. Emerson, he just went on there and said, yeah, Birmingham over in the U.K., it's an all-Muslim town. And then that can be checked in about eight seconds by Google. People are watching on social media, so it gets around when you make a mistake. And yes, he did apologize, but it's very, very simple, Mr. Emerson. You get a piece of paper, and you make sure that you prep and you have notes in front of you. And I see this all the time, Ed. Guests go on the air, and mm -hmm. they just say, I'm going to wing it, and they don't bother to check their facts, and they don't realize that every word they're saying is being scrutinized, not by people that so much that are watching, but one person on social media, it goes viral, and you see what happened with Steve Emerson and Fox. And by the way, the host... Ms. Pirro uh, didn't even correct him at all because it fit the narrative that she wanted to hear. He calls it a terrible no. error. The terrible error is having people like that as a guest or a so-called expert who basically just throw it out there and don't care what happens to it. Joe, we're all out of time, but we're going to do it again real soon, my friend. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Ed. Enjoy the weather. All right, we will. Stay warm. Back after a short timeout for the latest edition of Spanning the Globe.